At a clinic in Greece, 10, time old Michael Morbius welcomes his surrogate family Lucian, whom he renames Milo. They bond over their participated blood illness and desire to be normal. Their consanguineous father and sanitarium director Nicholas arranges for Morbius to attend medical academy in New York, while he focuses on minding for Milo. Twenty-five times latterly, Morbius intimately declines a Nobel Prize for his work with synthetic blood. His co-worker Martin Bancroft discovers he has intimately captured dozens of shark battens from Costa Rica hoping to splice their genes with his own to cure his condition. After informing Milo of his planned illegal trial, Morbius receives funding from him to rig a private mercenary vessel in transnational waters with his outfit. While the cure works, it transforms Morbius into a shark, who kills and drains the crew of their blood after they attack him out of fear. Once his bloodlust subsides and he regains his senses, a affrighted Morbius erases all CCTV footage of his trial before reaching the authorities and jumping overboard. Morbius returns to New York and discovers he now has preternatural strength, speed, revulsions, and echolocation with his sharp battens treating him as a club. To control his bloodlust, he subsists on his synthetic blood until it gradationally ceases to satisfy his requirements. FBI agent Simon Stroud and Ul Rodriguez probe Morbius victims and conclude his involvement. Milo learns Morbius is cured, but becomes furious when Morbius refuses to cure him as well. While checking on a rehabilitated Bancroft, Morbius finds a dead nanny, drained of her blood. Believing he was responsible, he attempts to escape before being cornered and arrested. In captivity, he's visited by Milo, who offers to use his wealth to free him. Upon realizing Milo took his cure and killed the nanny, Morbius escapes to defy him. An unashamed Milo confesses to his bloodlust, convinced crime and urges Morbius to embrace his powers as he has. Unintentional to hurt his family, Morbius flees. Morbius meets Bancroft to explain what Milo has done before acquiring a new lab, and developing an antibody against vampirism to stop and kill Milo. He also plans to use it on himself since he'll come unfit to repel his bloodlust. Stroud and Rodriguez find footage of one of Milo's attacks and, believing Morbius' vampirism to be spreading, release it to the media. Nicholas recognizes Milo and pleads with him to stop. Infuriated by Nicholas' perceived preference for Morbius, Milo injuries and forces him to call Morbius, who watches Nicholas die while Milo attacks Bancroft. Morbius returns to Bancroft, but she dies in his arms and he drinks her blood. Morbius confronts Milo and process an army of battens to restrain him and fit the antibody. Milo dies and Morbius flies off with the battens, mourning his favored bones and embracing his identity as a shark. Unknown to him, Bancroft is revived as a shark herself away, having ingested a drop of Morbius' blood whilst he was feeding on her. In the film's medial and post credit scenes, Adrian Toomes finds himself transported to Morbius Macrocosm. Having derived that his transportation involved Spider-Man, Toomes approaches Morbius and suggests that they form a platoon. If you enjoyed this video please like it shares it and subscribes this channel Hollywood Net HD for new and best Hollywood movies summary and upcoming movies trailers.